Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Saturday and welcome back to our Wicca 101 class. This week we are tackling the introduction to astrology. Astrology is the study of the influences of the stars and planets upon individuals and groups. It is both descriptive and predictive. What it describes are essentially the factory settings for individuals via their birth charts, which is the astrological position of the planets at the time of their birth. It also describes the prevailing energy currents that play a role in shaping events and how people are affected by them. The way astrology can predict is by means of the energies they come and go in predictable cycles, much like the changings of the seasons. And by studying what occurred in the past, during certain conditions, it can help us determine what is likely to occur or what is possible to occur when those conditions cycle back. Astrology began to be developed by the ancient Babylonians circa the 16th century BCE after observing events around them correlating to the positions of the stars. Subsequent civilizations continued the study, notably the Persians, Egyptians, Indians, Greeks, and Romans. Astrology did go into decline with the rise of Christianity and with the fall of the Western Roman Empire, but it came back to the forefront during about 1000 AD up until the 1500s. Then there was a renewed interest, which occurred in the 18th and 19th centuries, and finally in the 1930s, horoscopes were printed on a weekly and a daily basis in the newspapers. And today, astrological information can be found everywhere on the internet. Astrology is a tool that we can use to understand ourselves, which is why I think it's worthwhile for pagans, witches, Wiccans, but especially witches and Wiccans, in particular to study this, because without self-knowledge, a practitioner of the magical arts is lost. So each planet in your chart sits in a particular star sign, and that reflects specific traits. And the positions of the planets and relationship to each other will further reveal characteristics and energy you have within yourself. And the house the planets reside in are also further refine the information so you can really tell what's going on with that. And studying your birth chart will serve the dual purpose of helping to improve your self-understanding and of getting your toes wet into the world of astrology. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Astrology is a discipline unto itself. It will take time to learn and to really get a grip on. So it's sensible to set reasonable goals. What I've always strove to do is to understand more about astrology this year than I did the year before, and then I gradually build up my knowledge over time. It does get easier and a little less opaque, I promise. So in astrology, we have 12 signs, and each sign is associated with one of the four elements. The fire signs are more gregarious, and they are action-oriented. The earth signs are practical and realistic. Air signs are more intellectual, and they're interested in people specifically in figuring out what makes them tick. And then water signs are emotional and intuitive. Now, each sign will either be characterized as cardinal, fixed, or mutable. A cardinal sign is going to be self-motivated and ambitious. Fixed signs are determined and they represent the essence of their element. And mutable signs are easygoing and pliable. So the signs themselves, first we have Aries, which is cardinal fire, then Taurus, which is fixed earth, Gemini, mutable air, Cancer, cardinal water, Leo, which is a fixed fire sign, then we have Virgo, which is mutable earth, then Libra, cardinal air, Scorpio, fixed water, Sagittarius, which is mutable fire, and then Capricorn, which is cardinal earth. Aquarius, which is fixed air, and then Pisces, mutable water. So about the planets, not everything that is referred to as a planet in astrology is a literal planet. The term planet is used for ease of reference and should be viewed symbolically rather than literally. So the planets in brief, um, the main ones, we have the sun. The sun is going to represent who you are, the core essence of you in relation to how you envision the future, your true self, and what is it that gives you life? The moon represents your heart, your inner standing, your emotions, subconscious, and your personal past and conditioning. So think behavioral patterns here. Then your rising sign is how you are perceived by other people, outer appearance, mannerisms, as well as objectives that you need to master in this life and your immediate response to things when they take place. Your mercury represents the way you think, and communicate as well as wellness and intellect. 
Venus is how and what you love, your relationship to the material world, how you create, and how you want to be loved. Mars represents how you handle life, drive, courage, passion, how you employ your energy, and how you pursue what you want. Jupiter represents your luck. Um, it is a great expander. It takes things to a larger scale, in other words. It represents higher learning, growth potential, belief system in the grand scheme of things. Essentially, this is where we start seeing how you are woven into the larger tapestry of life. Your Saturn represents self-discipline and how you handle responsibility. It is the keeper of time. It is your karmic lessons, your limitations, and your fears. Uranus represents how you approach things and how your generation um, approaches change just generally. Neptune is more imaginative and represents also a spiritual capacity, your own spirit, and how your generation as a whole approaches spirituality. Pluto is the area of transformation, evolutionary potential, as well as the potential for change within your generation. And this brings us to astrological houses, of which there are 12. Your first house will be your ascendant sign. It is you, your body, physical appearance, how you are perceived by others, and all the experiences you have in life are filtered through this particular house. Your second house deals with money matters, your personal priorities in relation to values, desires, possessions, as well as your ultimate goal for this particular lifetime. Your third house is about communication, uh, siblings, basic learning, teaching, practical mind, and socialization. Your fourth house is about the home, security, family ties, how you, rep how you are linked to your past, safety, nurturing, and roots. Your fifth house represents love, creativity, kids, sex, risks, romance, gambling, adventure, fun, and self-esteem. Your sixth house is about work, health, duty, service, and practical skills. Your seventh house is about partnerships of all sorts, how you identify with others, and your sense of balance. Your eighth house is about intimacy, joint finances and values, sexual energy, shared resources, death and endings, and how you handle death and endings. Your ninth house, uh, house is about higher religion, philosophy, higher education, ideas, travel, higher mind, spirituality, and how you expand your horizons. And then your tenth is about your career, but it's more so not necessarily what it is you will be doing, but how you are seen, your title, your status, authority, uh, respect, and recognition. Then your 11th house is about groups, friends, your legacy, causes, goals, friends, harmony, and fellowship. And the 12th house is about being the closet of your heart. This is where you keep your secrets, your karma, the past, dreams, visions, limitations, repressed energy, and spiritual connection. So, as if that's not quite enough, we're going to look at just a little bit more. Uh, then we have aspects, which is essentially the spatial relationships between the planets, and we'll also touch a little bit on what retrograde means. So first we have the conjunction, which is zero degrees. It's emphasis. It represents new beginnings or interactivity. Then you have a semi-square, which occurs at 45 degrees, representing interchange. It is the release of individual expression. Then you have opposition at 180 degrees. Awareness raises and defines what the issues are. Then you have squares, which occur at 90 degrees. This is an impasse. It creates a need for new structuring. Trines occur at 120 degrees. They are opportunities. They provide for a creative outlet. Then you have the sesequadrate. <laughs> I said it. At 135 degrees, it is involvement and need to focus one's creative energies. And then you have sextiles, which occur at 60 degrees. It's about ability and it's in the inclination to produce adult results, rather. And then we have retrogrades. And this is when a planet appears to be moving backwards. It isn't moving backwards, of course, but that's how it looks from the perspective of the Earth. It is about a need for renewal, renewal and to recycle old energies. So after all that, let's all take a deep breath. Sip your tea if you need to. It may sound all very complicated, but I promise it's going to be okay. Uh, just think of astrology as a puzzle. And in Wicca 101, what we're going to be doing is we're going to find the edge pieces of that puzzle and we're going to link those together. 
And then once we get into WICA 202 and 303, we will be filling in the middle. So you will have a better overview of it. Now, over the next 12 weeks, the class will be taking a closer look at the 12 signs of the zodiac so you can get better acquainted with the personality or the flavor of the energy of that sign. We will look at only one sign per week. Hopefully that will make it less overwhelming. And in these classes, we will also briefly touch on how the energy of a sign manifests in a particular planet as well as a particular house. And through this process, you will be encouraged weekly to compare what you're learning to your birth chart and hopefully give the information uh, it'll be have more context. It'll be easier for you to absorb and see how it fits in with everything else. So homework for February 12th through the 18th. Uh, go online and search for a free natal chart and then uh, print out or copy by hand the placements for your birth chart. Then research what each of the placements mean and take notes on this. And then for your third part of the assignment, as you learn more about your birth chart, have there been surprises? Does anything about yourself make more sense now? Has it raised any questions? I would uh, love to hear how you're getting along with that. Uh, there will be a discussion tomorrow in the lounge channel at Blackbirds Brew on Discord. It will be at 3 p.m. Central Time, so I hope you'll uh, come over there and have a nice conversation with us. Uh, in the meantime, if you haven't already joined Discord, there is a link in the description box below for you to do so. And of course, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, like the video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.